Hello children. How is life? How is life? Good? Better? Best? Yes. It has to be the best always. Otherwise, this corona fear will be around us and slowly it will get inside us. So don't let it happen. Right? Keep yourself cheerful, very positive and always full of good thoughts. So you'll become strong, stronger and strongest to fight the fear around you and to fight the pandemic around you. Right? And to be ahead of the fear, not to walk with the fear. Put the fear behind. All oh, rubbish. Put the fear behind and take on life, take on the challenge, be happy, be positive. And with that, we move on to our new chapter, Discovering Tutankhamun by A.R. Williams. Now, this story, when you read it, please get your books, all of you, as soon as possible. I do not know whether all of you have got your books, but please, as soon as possible, get your books because slowly, you know, it will be high time and exams, final exams, this and that will be there. So the main part of the thing summary I'm going to discuss today, the main part of the story in the form of a summary. So I'm going to take you back to the past when there lived a boy king who ruled the great nation Egypt. Right. So Tut or Tutankhamen was a teenaged hare. What is the meaning of hair? Descendant or the means the rightful person of a family. So Tut or Tutankhamen was a teen aged heir to the royal throne of Egypt. The family had ruled Egypt but Tutankhamen died young. So Tutankhamen actually had died very young. So this story tells us about the mystery that surrounded his death. Okay, he was the last of the family line. His funeral marked the end of a dynasty. And details of his passing away is not clear. The details are not clear. So here comes up the story that shows how the investigations were carried on after his death so that we get to know whether he had died a natural death or he had been murdered by whosoever. Tut's father or grandfather, Amenhotep III, Amenhotep III was a very powerful ruler and he ruled Egypt for almost 40 years. His son, Amenhotep IV, succeeded him and the new king promoted the worship of Aten, the sun disk, the new king. Who was the new king? Amenhotep IV. He was the son of Amenhotep III. So this new king promoted the worship of Aten, the sun disk. He changed his name from Aten Akhenaten. Akhenaten. Who changed his name? This new king, Amenhotep IV. He changed his name to Akhenaten. The servant of the sun god, A-K-E-H, sorry, A-K-H-E-N, A-T-E-N, Akhenaten. So he changed, Amenhotep IV changed his name to Akhenaten. Why? Because he was the worshipper of sun and he came to be known as Akhenaten, the servant of sun god. He also shifted the religious capital from the old city of Thebes to the new city. He also shocked the country by attacking Amun, a major god, breaking down its images and closing the temples. He attacked Amun also. He was succeeded by another mysterious ruler who died very soon. So we start with whom? Amenhotep III. We move on to Amenhotep IV who did all these kinds of activities. He was a worshipper of sun god. He 
destroyed, he smashed the temples of Amun. He was very, very means uh, ardent devotee of sun god and the other god that was Amun. He destroyed all the temples. And then who, who succeeded this king? Another mysterious ruler, but he did not live long. He died very soon. Then a very young Tutankhamen sat on the throne. He is widely known as Tut. He restored the old ways and the worship of God Amun. He also changed his name to Tutankhamun. He ruled for about nine years and then he died unexpectedly. Tut's mummy was discovered in 1922 by a British archaeologist Howard Carter. Perhaps he was murdered, but he was laid to rest with a lot of gold and with everyday things like games, a bronze razor, clothes and cases of food and wine. Why? Because it was believed that the dead pharaoh would need those things in afterlife. All Egyptians believed in afterlife and they believed that if they keep these things, this bronze, razor, clothes, whatever the king was using when he was alive, then he will be comfortable in his afterlife. Right. So what happened? Howard Carter, who was a British archaeologist, discovered Tut's tomb after years and years of searching. Much of the treasure is buried in his tomb and that was buried there in the tomb. It had already been looted. Tutankhamen was buried with a lot of treasure but that treasure had been slowly looted by whoever wanted to steal it. Means the people had attacked and they had slowly started stealing the treasure. And what happened? The Even then, even then, after so much of looting also, it was the richest royal collection ever found in any tomb. The rock-cut tomb was 26 feet underground. The walls had paintings. Tut's gilded face was there on the outer coffin lid. After months of recording the treasure, Carter began investigating the three-layered coffin of, Kut, of Tut in the tomb. After months and months of investigation, Carter started investigating the three-layered coffin of Tut in the tomb. In the first one, he found the garlands of olive leaves, lotus petals and cornflowers. Okay? The burial, it seemed, was done in the March, in the month of March or April, because that is why, that is why corn flowers were there, olive leaves were there, lotus petals were there. So most probably, the burial was done. Burial was done in the month of March or April. When Carter finally reached Tutankhamen's mummy, he faced trouble. What was the trouble? Raisins were used for cementing took to the bottom of the solid gold coffin. And unfortunately, those raisins have become very hard. It had become, the raisins had become very, very hard. After years and years of being in the tomb, the raisins had become very, very hard. It was really impossible. He was unable to take the body from the or separate the body from the raisin. Even the burning sun failed to melt the raisin. It was so, so hard. And the raisins had to be removed. Otherwise, the body could not be studied. So what did Carter do? Carter used a chisel and hammer and from beneath the limbs of the body, Carter started chiseling the body, cutting the body away. Because Carter had little options. There were no options with Carter. If he had not cut the mummy limb by limb, the thieves would have taken all the gold away. Carter's men 
first remove the mummy's head and then cut off every joint, major joint. Once the body was removed in parts, it was reassembled back on a layer of sand in a wooden box and put at the original place. Now what would you have felt if a dead body which they used to preserve so highly, so dedicatedly, if it is cut to pieces and you have to do it for your investigation. If another uh, culture, another community comes to your place or rather comes to India and starts cutting the Hindu bodies away uh, like this for starting and investigating, would we like it? We will also not like it. Indians will not like it at all. So similarly, Egyptians also did not like Carter's activities at all. But then they raised a voice. Carter defended himself that if he had not cut the mummy, then the thieves would have got the gold. So he defended the Egyptians. He, did, he defended his activities like this. In 1968, an anatomy professor x-rayed the mummy and revealed a new fact. He said that the breast bone and front ribs of Tutankhamen's body, body were missing. They were missing. The breast bone and the front ribs of the body were missing. Today, CT, what is the full form of CT children? Computed tomography takes hundreds of x-rays. Today, CT scan takes hundreds of x-rays and creates a three-dimensional image of the body. It was on 5th January 2005 and the world's most famous mummy of Tut was put into a CT scanner to answer two big questions. How did Tut die and how old was he at the time of his death? Right? So, you can very well see how much studying was going on about these two big questions. To find out the answer to two big questions. How did he die and what was his age that time? The CT scan was donated by its manufacturer Siemens. King Tut had died some 3,300 years ago. On the night of the scan, the workman carried Tut from the tomb in his box. They put it in the trailer. They put it on the trailer and they held it in front of the scanner. The process took less than three hours. The pharaoh was back in the tomb again. The city scan dispelled. It removed all the doubts. Nothing had been seriously wrong. Right? And Tutankhamen was back resting in peace in his tomb in the valley of the departed of departed kings of Egypt. And as the body was slided inside, Osiris stood guard over the entrance of the tomb. Osiris is the god of death. So he stood guard at the entrance of the tomb protecting Tutankhamen in the valley of the departed kings of Egypt. So that is that. Your story, your summary is shared with you. You are going to read the story and with your doubts, you are going to share your doubts. You are not going to keep them inside you. Please share your doubts. Rewind if you have to rewind the video. Listen to the video again. If there are any kind of disconnect, please connect me back. I will be up with the assignment shortly. Right? That is all. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay positive.